I want to make announcement first. Huh? We already uploaded the Wii U guest lecture in the Eden. The links are in the Eden. He will be sending email to you later as well as you. Right? Maybe some of you already got the email. Right? That's the first thing. As for the for those who cannot do the group assignment on that day, uh, currently our decision based on my discussion with other lecturers. Our decision is you will lose the 20%. Okay, make sense? Until further discussion. Uh. Say again, uh, you never pay attention at the time. Oh, okay. Uh. You can replay it later. <laughs> no, uh. Okay, for that what I say, week nine is already stated in your manual like a long time ago, right? Week nine, if you see your page eight Roman letters of the manual, it's already stated a long time ago, right? Actually, we don't allow you to go and travel during your semester, right? You, you know what I mean? You are actually not allowed to go go out and book an overseas trip and then you say you want to go there and go there, so can I do my group assignment later? This is a group assignment, first thing. Second thing, this is an in-class group assignment. It's not like you can bring it out, then later enjoy your weekend, then do your holiday first, then you come back and do, do, do like that, right? So currently, for those who... 10 overseas trip during that period, which is what's the day week nine, right? Currently, you may lose the 30%. Of. This is our decision for all the economic structures together, economics department, all right? Make sense, huh? Under further discussion, of, if you are facing any difficulties or issues, do feel, do feel free to talk to me, right? Okay. <clears throat> so now I'm just going to share with you what we cover so far. What we cover is what we call elasticity. Right? Elasticity, I told you you must write down the three keywords, which are responsiveness, sensitivity, Yes, and flexibility, you're right. Right? Flexibility, right? And the definition of elasticity is actually, it is a measure, in general terms, uh, is a measure of responsiveness or the change of one variable with respect to the change of another variable. This is how we look at it at a general form, right? And when I say changes in this chapter, in this subtopic, the change actually refers to percentage change. Right? Percentage change. It actually refers to percentage change. Make sense? Right? And I saw some of your half of the group just now. A lot of you still get different answers for different exercises in the in terms of calculations. Which means now, until now, you still cannot make the cannot tell the difference between percentage change and change. Right? Let me repeat what is percentage change and change again. Right, percentage change means new value minus old value divided by old value times 100%. Right, okay, this is percentage change. If it's from something to something, it will be equal to 2 minus from divided by from value times 100%. Right? This is the percentage change. However, what we are dealing with right now is PED. Right? PED, if you want to look at the general definition, the only thing you need to change is normally we put the P in the second variable. Right? The quantity demanded in the first variable. So, what I need to change in my definition is just quantity demanded with respect to the price. 
percentage of price. That's all. This is how I change. Okay, I don't need to change other definition. In other words, save for PES later. PES maybe next class, right? For next class, I will just write the same thing. The only thing I want to change is QS. That's all. QD to QS. This is how I remember all my definition. And I only remember the keywords. I only remember, to be honest, I only remember one word, which is responsiveness. That's the only word I remember. The rest is just writing, writing. It's er or and something. Blah, blah, blah. That's all. Makes sense. Right? PED is a measure of responsiveness or percentage change of quantity demanded with respect to percentage change of price. Right? Because what we want to measure is by how many percent. Right? When we are facing price changes in certain products, goods, and services, what is our quantity demanded? Respond to the price changes. Right? So this is PED. PED formula is actually equals to percentage change of quantity demanded over percentage change of price. Right? This is the PED formula. Right? Which means if we put it in terms of here, it's actually there will be two percentage change, which will leave us to two new minus O over O divided by new minus O over O. This one will make sense or not? This one makes sense or not to all of you, right? Similarly, I don't like to write the write out the percentage because I know that times hundred will be divided by to the the leftover the remaining components. They are Q one minus Q zero over Q zero divided by P one minus P zero or P zero. Right? Some of the textbook they will not write like that. Some of the textbooks when they write this formula. Because this, there are two divisions inside here. There are two fractions inside the division. So they will write like that. They are the same actually. Q1 minus Q0 over Q0 times P0 over P1 minus P0. But for me, it's easier to remember this way. It's up to you how you want to remember. Does it make sense? Right? Okay. For me, it's easier to remember this. So what they write is P0, Q1 minus Q0 divided by Q0. P1 minus P0. It's the same thing actually. Makes sense, huh? So don't think that there are many, many formulas just for elasticity. Actually, there's just one. It's just the evolution or the flipping of each other. That's all. Makes sense, huh? Makes sense, huh? So some textbook, they actually write this as their formula. Some textbook write this as their formula, right? Me, I use the original. Original value is easiest. Then you can flip whatever you like. Okay, makes sense. This is for PD. I also mentioned about midpoint. Now I say midpoint is more accurate than the than this formula. However, midpoint will only be used in uni, right? Foundation will only use this formula. This is the simplest elasticity formula form. Makes sense, right? In university, you will not see this formula anymore, right? Chances are they're going to go straight to midpoint unless you know the original or basic formula. Okay, after we use this formula, we then found out that it can be categorized under five categories, all the com all the coefficients, right? But I only this I only share with you three. Today we're going to finish out the two, right? Another two. So the three, the first one is PED is equal to zero. PD equals to zero means it is actually perfectly inelastic. When the demand curve is perfectly inelastic, you have to draw it like what? It must look like what? Louder. I. How to see is I. Use your imagination. Right? Imagine, imagine if you cannot imagine there's one line, imagine there are two lines, right? Makes sense. These two lines shows the perfect I. That's why it's perfectly inelastic even curve, right? First thing. Second thing, what is perfectly inelastic? 
Perfectly inelastic actually shows, right? Regardless of the price changes, by how much the quantity demanded remain the same, which is the percentage change of quantity demand will be equal to zero. How to show this in the diagram, right? If this is the P0, this is P1, you will see that the quantity demanded remain the same. Let's say this is 100, remain the same. No, not responsive at all, right? If the price drop to P2, the quantity demanded still remains the same, 100. So they are not responsive or not sensitive or not flexible. Makes sense. In perfectly inelastic means not sensitive, not responsive, not flexible. This is for perfectly inelastic demand curve. Any question? Right, I also told you the example here, very rare. Normally we just stick with cancer medicine. Right? Second type is where PED is equals to infinite. When PED is graded is equals to infinite, this shows that this type of demand curve is perfectly elastic demand curve. Perfectly elastic demand curve means what? It only means that at a certain point in time, suddenly when the price drops until a certain point, certain price point, suddenly we will have infinite demand. All right? So I told you that this type of products is normally like the technology stuff that currently is very high price point right now, right? For example, I told you spaceship, you can also think about drones. Anyone, anyone is already playing drones, flying drones everywhere and shoot people? No, no, yeah. Okay, no, yeah. Or oh, no one, no one is, no one have a remote drone or something, man. Right? Or oh, go and go and go and take some ugly photos of other people. No, no, yeah. Okay, so maybe drones is now considered maybe still a, Luxurious product, right? Later on, maybe when the price drop under one ringgit, even the baby want to play with drones. Who knows, right? Make sense, right? So what what this means? This means that initially there's no demand. Let's say P zero is here. There's no you cannot touch the demand curve. There's no quantity demanded. But when it suddenly drop until a certain price point, normally it's drop uh, It's not increase uh, It's normally drop under a certain price point. Then suddenly the percentage change of quantity demand become infinite, right? So infinite divided by percentage change of price will be equal to infinite. Makes sense. This is for perfectly elastic demand curve, right? The last type that I covered previously is where PED is equal to one, right? PED equals to one is almost non-existent in the real world, right? Actually, all these three are actually all these three are extremes. All these three are extremes, right? It's similar to your planned economy system and market economy system. In the real world, actually, no one country is perfectly per perfectly planned economy or perfectly market economy system. They are all mixture, right? Ninety nine point nine nine percent of them, right? Same for the five examples because. They are just for comparison purpose, right? The most important one is the another two that I'm going to share with you, right? As for unit trade, I, I told you there's even no examples, right? And another way to draw, I don't want to show you the same way that I, I asked you to draw inside the manual, right? Which is the page 63, right? I found some students accidentally draw on page 67 already. Please check if you accidentally draw on page 67, rub everything because that one is for PES data. Right? Makes sense, huh? Anyone accidentally draw in page 67 already? No, huh? No, huh? all in page 63, huh? Okay. Your group is better than just now another. <laughs> okay. So, how to draw? Another way to draw unitary elastic is this is unitary, by the way. Unitary elastic. Another way to draw is You draw it as a right angle triangle. 
Anyone know what's right angle triangle? Do I need to show you what's maths? Anyone don't know what's right angle? Everyone know uh, right angle. Uh. Which means two sides of the triangle here and here, it will have 45 degree. Right? When you have 45 degree line in the unitary elastic, confirm every price changes, you will lead to the same percentage change of quantity demanded because it's 45 degree. Makes sense. Huh? Right? So you can write, you can draw like that. Right? If you want. And this one is actually easier to draw compared to the one that asks you to draw. Okay. Okay. For this one, another another characteristic of unitary elastic, which we are going to use later on, is total revenue will always be the same, regardless of the price changes. No matter the price change by 100%, right? Because the quantity demanded will fall by the same percentage, so their total revenue will always be close to the same. What is total revenue? For those who don't know it's total revenue, I will share with you later. Okay? Basically, this is what I covered in the previous class. Any question? Any question? Anything that you are not sure about elasticity? Because elasticity compared to demand is actually elasticity is actually a harder concept. Right? And another thing, uh, take note, uh, Percentage change is not a gradient formula. So elasticity is not to measure whether you have positive or negative gradient. So it's not related to whether it is upper sloping or downward sloping. Make sense? Huh? Make sense? Percentage change formula is not the change formula. Gradient is a change formula. Gradient is O a new minus O. Percentage change is new minus O over O. Okay, O, O, right? So they are different. So it's not a gradient formula. Now I'm going to show you the last question for the tutorial question, right? As for the answers, right? If you want to know the answers for chapter one until ch eh, question one until question four, I'll just give you the answers. You go and go back, count, count until you are familiar with that, right? Because I will assure you because I will assure you, elasticity is going to come out. Okay, confirm. Right. It's either whether they want to come out in calculation form or essay. Makes sense, huh? Makes sense. All right. So the the answers, right? What's the answers? For question one, two, three, four, uh, for you know, part one, two, three, four, uh, part one, two, three, four. Question 11, one is 0 0.19, 1.5 for number two, number three is 0 0.625, number four is one. I asked to do calculation, I will share with you explanation next time, right? Okay, I will share with you the explanation, explanation next time. Now I'm going to show you how to do the last question up, right? Instead of me just showing you the answer, let me just show you how to do the last one. Okay, for the last one is the part five. A lot of you left blank, I saw, right? Let me just snip this and let you see how to do this, right? Same thing, uh, whatever I wrote, it will be in your whiteboard. So sometimes, I told you before, economics are like maths, partially maths. Sometimes we give you the answer. We want you to calculate the original value, right? Normally, we ask you to calculate PED, but sometimes we ask you to Calculate the original value. Makes sense, huh? We give it the PED. We ask you to calculate the inverse, the behind. Okay. All right. All right. Makes sense. Makes sense. So, using the formula that I just shared with you again, and what's missing, right? What's missing? What's missing in here? What they give? 
Just now I use what? Q1. Uh. Q1. Okay, what is the new value? Q1 is equals to what? Unknown. Unknown set it as X. Pretty simple. Makes sense. What is the O quantity? Hmm? 500,000. Anyone cannot get this? What is the new price? 950. What is the old price? 1,000. Right? What is the PED? PED is equal to, in here, you must write negative 2. Because when you we already give you the answer, you must use back the original answer, right? I say you can save the negative, but when you want to find the original value, you have no choice, but you must put the negative. Otherwise, we get 450,000 for answer. Make sense, huh? That's why this is considered a trap, okay? So what you need to do is actually just same thing, write down the formula using Q1 minus Q0, over Q0, over P1, minus P0, over P0. Okay, for those who haven't count, I'll give you 30 seconds to count. What's the answer for X? Well, I'll check this. 30 seconds. And counting. Yes. Okay. Just now do what? Pass you your Pass you Pass you already, then I check. Then I'm breaking my own words. Don't do that. Sorry, oh yeah, right wrong here. Q0 is the green color one. Q0 is the green color one. Mistake here, all right? Q0. Let's see the answer. Should have the answer. All the answers are the same. Zero point one nine or zero point one. Zero point one nine two. Right. Yeah. I <laughs> Because the person, I just uh, I calculate percentage change first, and then for the price, the percentage change, I use 1000 minus 950. Oh, you use 1000 minus 950? Because percentage Sorry, if you use 950 minus 1000 minus. Okay. And then I understand what you, how you get 
Okay. Do I need to show the working? All right, I'll show you the working. Uh, since you, some of you are asking. So it's actually equals to Q1, which is X minus Q0, 500,000, divided by Q0, 500,000, divided by P1. P1 is 950 minus 1,000 P0, divided by P0. This one you'll get me a lot. Get out, I just plot in on here. PD is equal to negative two. So after that, you just do calculation, same thing, right? Negative two is equal to X minus 500,000 divided by 500,000 over negative 50 over 1,000, correct? Correct? Which is equal to X minus 500,000 over 500,000 over negative 1 over 20. Correct? So it's equal to negative 2 times negative 1 over 20 equals to X minus 500,000 over 500,000. Make sense? Yeah. So 1 over 20 is what? 0 0.05. Or like that. La. If you don't know decimal, then at least can do fraction. Ma. So it's negative. Negative times negative is positive. No? So it's 1 over 10. 1 over 10 is 0 0.1. No? 0 0.1 is equal to this one. No? This amount, 500,000 over 500,000. Or 1 over 10 la. is the same. La. 1 over 10 or 50,000 is how much? Then times of 0 0.1 times 500,000 is what? 50,000 no? Or not? So it's 50,000. I, I rewrite uh, X minus 500,000 is equals to 50,000. All right? So X will be equals to 50,000 plus 500,000 no? So the answer is 550,000. Make sense? This is how we get off. Make sense? Like what I says, that's why sometimes uh, we will ask you the inverse. We give you the answer. You need to find the question. Find what's the original value. What's the Q1 or what's the P1 yourself? Make sense, huh? This is how we get up. Uh. Question? No, huh? Any question? If no, I will move on to our syllabus today. Raise up your hand if you have question. Or you can DM me. I can check my teams now if you are so shy. DM me. No? No one? Uh? No one? Uh? Right? Okay, now we move on. Today we're going to finish off the determinants of PED as well. And also the relationship between elastic and inelastic demand total revenue. And also another two concepts, which is the elastic and inelastic. Right? So let me just move to elastic first. For elastic, oh, elastic is PED greater than one, right? Let's say this is pipe number one, perfectly inelastic. Second one is perfectly elastic. Third one is unitary elastic. So type number four is actually Elastic, right? Elastic is where PED is greater than one. When PED greater than one, it means that a percentage change in the one price, right, of one good, it will bring in more percentage, more, more than one one percent of the change in the quantity demanded, right? More than one percent change in the quantity demanded, right? Normally, for example, if the price of textbook increased by twenty percent there will be a 40% decrease, which is more than 20%. Then only it will get greater than one. The value greater than one. Makes sense. Huh? PD must be greater than one. Huh? So your numerator must be greater than a denominator. Right? So then only you can get like two, three, four, five, like that, six. Right? This is elastic demand. Elastic demand, let me show you how to draw. Elastic demand. 
right? This is P and this is Q, right? And this is how you draw elastic demand. How do I judge whether you are drawing correct elastic demand or not? Use your imaginary line. It must look like E, but it's not a perfect E. Make sense or not? This is how I judge. Huh? Don't ask me later. Hey, sir, how you see it? Why? My, my, my one look like elastic, ma. My one look like inelastic. How? If you imagine yourself drawing that line on top, if it looks like E, then it's correct. If it doesn't look like E, then it's not correct. Make sense. But it's not perfect E, huh? because the demand curve is downward sloping, it's not horizontal. All right? It's not 180 degree. Huh? 180 degree, that was perfectly elastic demand. All right? So this is just like that. Then name the product. The product is normally a luxury. Name your own product, luxury products. Uh, Gucci, Prada, whatever, Hermes, right? Bijan, you know Bijan? Bijan. Okay, before, Bijan? Garlic rose. Garlic rose huh? Or you can name my furniture product. You know, remember my 330,000 furniture name? Uh, Mortani and C, uh, whatever. Okay, anyone? Right? Or for some of you, maybe the furniture that I showed you last week is not even, not even, Elastic, not even last three years, so don't don't put that brand. In pretty good, yeah. They're in pretty if they are you think that they're in pretty good, don't put the brand. Make sense, huh? Put what you think is branded or luxury. Luxurious product, okay? Okay, make sense? Like for example, uh six star Dubai Hotel, right? Seven star, okay, sorry. Sorry, I missed one star. Seven star? Yeah, because, yeah. I, huh? Seven star, yeah, yeah. I, no, I, I forgot, I forgot. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, my, my fault. That's why I apologize. I strongly apologize for my mistake for not going, not verifying the details before I share with you the knowledge. It's all my fault, right? Okay? Right? So, I don't know, maybe you feel that seven star Dubai hotel is just a normal good or just an inferior good. So feel free to make, make an eight star hotel or something. Right? Okay, make sense? Right? Okay, make sense? It's up to you, huh? Up to you. Right? This is for elastic demand curve. Right? How how to how to explain? This means what? When there's an increase, slight increase in the price or percentage change in the price of textbooks. Consumers, they are going to respond very greatly, extreme, because they want to try to reduce the quantity demand as much as possible. In this case, because this is two, it means that they reduce two times. The quantity reduced two times based on the price changes. Make sense now? This is how you explain the value. Okay now, okay? You don't need to draw the percentage except for the unitary. Don't need to draw the percentage. I just want to see whether it's E, or next one, inelastic. As for inelastic, the last one before we have break. Last one is PED. This one you have no choice, ladies and gentlemen. This one you have to write it between zero and one. You must write between zero and one. No choice. Just number four just now, you can actually write greater than one. You don't need to write between one and infinite. I feel it's useless, right? But for this one, you have no choice. PD must be between 0 and 1, which means in exact correct format, actually, it is between 0 and negative 1. Think about it. It's actually between 0 and negative 1. All right? Just now, the one actually is not greater than 1. Actually, it's less than negative 1. So it becomes negative 2, negative 3, negative 4. That's considered elastic. I want to also remind you about the negative. Okay, makes sense, huh? Which means also for in elastic demand curve, they are either a decimal or fraction. That's all. It must be between zero and one. It's either a decimal or a fraction. Okay, it cannot be the greater than one fraction. Huh? It cannot be five or three those those fraction because that one is one point something. All right? Okay. 
So how to draw the PD between 0 and 1? First of all, before you draw, you need to know the meaning. If the demand of this good is inelastic, it means what? What percentage change in the price will actually lead to a smaller percentage, smaller than the one percentage in the quantity demanded, right? Okay. Example: If there's a price increase, same same now, I use a twenty percent. I use back the twenty percent. This time it will be smaller. The, the quantity demanded change will be smaller than twenty percent. Let's say ten percent decrease. Okay, make sense. These are all examples. This value is not. Confirm 100%, right? Make sense? You can use whatever number you like for examples. Okay? So there will be 10% decrease, which means after I calculate this is 0 0.5. 0 0.5 means it's between 0 and 1. No? How to represent when there's a huge increase in the price or 1% change, whatever, depends on what is the percentage, right? Consumers, they are not very responsive. They are not very sensitive. They are not very flexible, right? And they will not reduce their quantity demanded too much. In this case, because it's half, so they will only respond half time of the price in this. Right? Half of the time of the percentage price in this. So how to draw this? Finally, the drawing itself. PQ. In here, you draw demand curve. Must be like that. Demand curve, how you draw like that? Use your imagination. Your imagination must look like mirror image of italic eye. You know it's italic or not? Anyone don't know it's italic? Do I need to show you what's italic? Anyone ever use a Microsoft Word or Google before? Google Doc? Hey, hey, don't go. Really got some people never use one. No, don't go. Okay. It must be mirror image. Huh? It's not the 100% italic eye, but it's a mirror image of the italic eye. Okay? Mirror image. I, I'll show you what's italic eye. Huh? Just in case some of you really don't know. Let's say this is demand, right? If I put italic, it will be like that, right? Okay? It will be like that. This is italic, but I want the mirror image, right? Okay? This is for inelastic demand. Any question on inelastic demand? This shows what? I'm not too responsive with regard to the price changes. Okay? I'm not responsive. Let me show you another thing before I have give you a break because it's quite early. Right? Now let me just draw these two, uh, elastic and inelastic. On the left and right hand side, next to each other, let me show you this. All right? First of all, which one is elastic? Which one is inelastic? Turn around. Hey, your turn. Which one elastic? Which one inelastic? Left hand side. Huh? Right hand side is inelastic, right? Okay. Now I'm going to show you if there's a percentage price change in the same distance. Let's say this is P0, this is P1. Right? Like that, increase right. Then I draw the turn here. Right? Same here, P0 increase to P1, same distance. I don't need to calculate percentage, but if the same distance, it means that the percentage change is the same. Make sense, huh? If there's the same percentage change, notice their quantity demanded, right? What's the difference between the elastic and the inelastic quantity demanded? Who's next? Can we? What's the difference? Quantity demanded for elastic demand will decrease by more. 
because it is more responsive, more flexible, more sensitive to the price changes. Makes sense. On the other hand, the quantity demanded of the inelastic demand curve is very small. Given the same percentage change in the price, it is less elastic, which means what? Less sensitive, less responsive, and less flexible. So in the price increase, they don't want, they cannot move too much. The quantity demanded are fixed or tied to something, right? The, what, what is the something I will share with you after the break? Okay, any question before I give you a break? Okay, let's have a break. Continue, play one piece, one piece. 